Hi, we're the History Hikers. I am Dries. And I'm Jente. And we're standing in front of the Chateau de Montaigle, which is very important. Well, I don't know why it's very important. I only know a legend about it. Give us the legend. <laughs> the legend is, well, at one point in its history, it's very vague because it's a legend, you know. Um, the lord of the castle, he had to surrender during a siege and, well, it was determined that he had to be hanged the next morning. Um, but the lady of the castle, she could go freely and take her most prized possession with her. So the next morning, the lady of the castle is seen with a big bundle of sticks on her shoulder, walking out of the castle. And when she's out of safety, out of the big bundle of sticks, there comes her husband. Let's go and check it out. Welcome to the third installment of our three Belgian castle extravaganza. Today you join us at Montaigle Castle, located on a rocky spur in the Belgian municipality Onhe. It towers over the Molnier Valley on one side and the Flavion Valley on the other. The site has seen occupation since the prehistoric times. Many traces of stone and bone tools were found all over this valley. Later during Gallo-Roman times the Rock of Montaigle was used as an oppidum or fortified refuge, especially during the insecurity of the waning days of the Western Roman Empire. Around 450 the site was abandoned for four centuries. A Merovingian cemetery from the 6th and 7th centuries found on the slope opposite Montaigle seems to indicate a shift of habitation towards the valley. I see strawberries! And how it is? Around the year 900, a first castle was built on top of the mighty rock, though very few traces remain. It was built by the Lords of Fang, whose name first pops up in 1050. The castle would also be known under that name until the 14th century. At the beginning of the 12th century, the fief passed to Gilles de Berlaymont, who built a square keep or donjon at the site. The fortified area at this time was about half as big as during the Roman period. The site was bought by Guy of Dampierre near the end of the 13th century. He passed it on to his son Guy of Namur. It was Guy of Namur who made the largest alteration to the castle so far, with the strongly defended residence on top of the spur and the lower-lying courtyard surrounding by walls and towers at equal distances. Guy of Namur was also famous for his role in the Battle of the Golden Spurs. His castle at Montaigle was used to imprison a dozen French knights. In the first half of the 15th century, the county of Namur, along with the castle of Montaigle, was sold off to the Burgundian duke Philip the Good. The appearance of the fortress was changed radically to a more residential castle, which made it lose some of its defensive character. With the rise of gunpowder, most castles we visit undergo significant alterations to resist cannon fire or allow the placement of cannons, however not at Montaigle. The only change was a cannon platform that was built at the foot of the castle. Montaigle did not control any strategically significant roads and thus was spared large alterations. It was, however, not spared by the army of the French King Henry II. In 1554, the French army passed through the Meuse Valley and captured fort after fort. The last two castles we visited, Crèvecoeur and Poilvache, were both destroyed. 
The castle of Montegla was plundered and burned down. After the destruction it was decided not to rebuild the castle, which shows its insignificant strategic importance at the time. That was the Chateau de Montaigle, really impressive. I didn't really know anything about it until two years ago. What did you think? Yeah, impressive. It's really big and really nice that you could walk the stairs, go in the cellars. It's time for the arbitrary subjective castle score. I'm going to go for eight and a half because of what I said earlier. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, also an eight and a half. They also give you a leaflet with information when you come here. That's a nice added bonus. Yeah. We were the History Hikers, thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in watching more of these beautiful castles, then like, comment, subscribe and all that good YouTube stuff. If you have a question or if you have any other comment, drop them down below and we will react to all of them. Do it. Thanks so much. Until next time. Bye. Bye.